morning to everybody and praise the Lord. Come on, I said praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. He indeed is worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the honor. And he alone is worthy of all the praise. God's not going to share his glory with anybody, baby. It's all about J-E-S-U-S. -S. He's an awesome God. He's a good God. He's a phenomenal God. Hallelujah. And I thank him and I praise him for this opportunity. So what I would like to do right now is just go right on ahead to the throne room and we're just going to pray. Can we bow our heads and close our eyes? Father, we know that your presence is here. We acknowledge your presence. We thank you for your presence, Lord. Now, Father, what we're asking is that you touch the hearts, the minds, and the souls of the believers that are in this room right now, Lord God. Change us, Father God. Shape us and mold us, Lord God, into the very image of your precious son, Jesus. Father, it's not enough that we would just get a word, but we're asking this morning for a life-changing word, a delivering word, a healing word, a rhema word right now in Jesus' name. What now, if we do, what do we need to do to make a difference first in our households? Husbands, be the man that God has called you to be. Wives, be the wife that God has called you to be. We want to make a difference first in our households, then the community, our neighbors, our underlying areas. Next thing we can take the city, then we can take the state, then we can take the nation. Now we can talk to the world, but it has to start in our household first. So this morning, what I would like for us to do is I would love for the body of Christ just to focus on being one in the spirit and believing for God to show up and to show off in you this morning in the name of Jesus. So now what we're going to do is we're going to read the text and I would like for everybody to turn their Bibles, please, to the book of Acts. And I'm going to ask us that we read it on song blood together as one. It's going to be Acts chapter four, verse thirty two. Acts 4, verse 32. And my pastor giving me this text, so I was like, okay, I can use this, and then we're going to see what God is going to do. So are you guys ready to read? Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. Can we begin together? And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that all of these things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things common. Stop right there. Now I'm going to reread just from the NIV because it reads a little bit differently. And it says, all believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that they had any of the possessions were his own. But they shared everything they had. Now can God, all God's people say amen? Amen. There are several key words that we're going to look at in that text. Uh, and the first key word is going to be the word one. Okay. Our second key word that we're going to look at is the word common. Um, that's in this text as well. And we are going to examine both of these words in a moment. But what I would like to do is tell you what the title of today's message is. And the title of our message this morning is The Power of One. The power of one. We tend to do so many things as individuals that we do not understand the power of one. Yes, I know that there is power and strength in numbers. You can compress numbers um, and we can have a common goal. But when the body becomes one, now... We've got some power that we can fight with. See, individually, we're all going to war. We're all going to fight. But when we put everybody together as one, now we're going to be able to make a difference. See, we could go out there in the streets and everybody's screaming, everybody's screaming. But when you make one voice, one sound, now we're going to be able to have our voice heard. So, the power of one. I'm going to give an example talking about the power of one. I'm going to ask you to turn your word, please, to Genesis 11 and 1. And while you're turning, i got to say, God is really, really good because I did not 
had this in the text for this morning, and it was something that Pastor had said, and I was like, ooh, I can use that and kind of like go somewhere a little different with it. So please forgive, I do not have my... If you go to John 17, 22 and 23, New Testament, John 17, 22, 23, I'm going to begin to read, but you can go ahead and turn there, please. The Bible says this, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one, just as we are one. I am them and you and me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved me and love them, excuse me, as you have loved me. I'm in you, you're in me. We are one. Now we're talking about being one with God. We're talking about being one with the Father. We're talking about being one with the Son. We're talking about being one with the Holy Ghost. There is power in one. Hallelujah. There is power in one. Genesis 2 and 24 says this, I'll read, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become, how many flesh? It didn't say they're going to become two flesh. It's going to become one flesh. I got one family here. I've got another family here. Bang, I'm going to put them together and the two shall become one. There is power in one. Hallelujah. Two becomes one. John 10 and 30, John 10, 30 says this, I and my father are one. We have to understand and grasp the concept of the power of one. Why? Because of the one that died for each and every one of us in this room. Because of the one that paid a price that he didn't have to. Because of the one that got back up for each and every one of us in this room. The one who did it for each and every one of us in this room. If Jesus and the Father are one, and they are. But if they're one, then what does that make us? It makes us unified with him. In him and with him. Don't take my word for it. This is what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians 6 and 17. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Ephesians 4 and 5 says this. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There is power in one. But let me say this. Don't get me wrong. I am not talking about preaching oneness from a religious denominational standpoint. I am talking about showing that we are called to be one body. Because there's one church. There's one spirit. And the Lord has joined us with him. Does anybody believe that? Amen. I mean, y'all are quiet in here. I, I appreciate the fact that, that you're listening intently and paying attention, but I need somebody to say, I, amen. I, I, I hear what you're saying. I feel you. We all need to be on the same team, the same page, because there is only one God, and anybody know his name? Yeah. Come on, do you know his name? Yeah. If you know his name, can you give him some praise? If you love him, can you give him some praise? All going to one Acts 2 and 1 says this, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. How many accords? One. How many places? One. Oh yes, church, the power of one is awesome. If we can get the idea or concept of it, the power of one, that God is coming back for a church that is unified. He's looking for a church that's unified and united. The book of Acts speaks so profoundly about being in one accord. So it may well behoove us to understand what accord means. <laughs> and to put it quite simply, it means to be in agreement or harmony. We're going to agree 
or are we going to be harmonious about, yes, I agree that this is this, that that chair is purple, uh, that this is clear. Yeah, we can, we can agree. We're all going to agree or we're going to be in harmony about certain things. But my words are not enough. I have to always be able to go to what the word of God says. So in the book of Acts, because it speaks profoundly about being on one accord, Acts 2 and 46 says this. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. That text is embodied with harmony and agreement. The question being, do we have love for who? One another? Come on, do we have love for who? Are you in love with Jesus this morning? I surely hope and pray that as a body, we are all in love with him. Let me tell you why. If you don't get anything, please get this. I'm serious. Please get this. This is what the word says. 1 John 4 and 8. I got to say, I'm, I am failing. I'm not giving myself a passing grade. Pastor had been asking certain things. Check your love. Give yourself a love test. Okay. Are you giving yourself an A plus, an A, A minus, B, B minus? Where is your love in the whole grand scheme of things? And I'm like, hmm. Wow. Jimmy not doing so good right now. I'm just going to be one to tell you. Jimmy needs help. More love. <laughs> but this is what the Bible says in 1 John 4 and 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Let me read that again, just in case you didn't get it. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Love. Now listen, I know that there are a lot of parents out there. We have our spiritual parents. We have our natural or biological parents. Bear with me for a moment. If God is our daddy and we're joined with him in the spirit, as I read earlier, then we love him because he first loved us. That's what the Bible says. Are you in love this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, that's 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 weak. I mean, seriously, that's weak. Are you in love this morning? Yeah. Come on, who are you in love with? Jesus. Come on, what's his name? Jesus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. So now, what I want to do real quick, because we want to be able to get out of here and enjoy the rest of our day, so I want to tie up this word using some of the key words that I gave. One and come. We should all have at least one thing in common that we could walk out them front doors with this morning. Beyond the fact that these chairs is purple. Right. Okay. We know these chairs are purple, so okay, we, we got one thing. But being in one accord, being in love with the one who gave his life for us all, knowing that there is only one Lord. If you didn't know that Jesus and the Father are one. And that we are also one with spirit in him. So now when you know that, then you can truly say that the power of one is awesome. Can you just say the power of one? The power of one. Come on, stand on your feet and give God praise.